Hello everyone, welcome to my channel The Big Boolean Theory. This video is the first video of our lecture series on operating systems. So this is the first module that is the introduction module. In this module, I will basically give you a very high level introduction to operating systems, right? And how does it work? And within this module, there are three topics. And the topic that we will start with is computer hardware review. So the thing is, if you were to describe operating systems in one line, then it is a piece of software that manages the computer hardware. So in order to understand and study what an operating system is and how does it work, it is very important for us to have a good understanding of how the computer hardware actually works. So first of all, with uh, in this topic, in a few videos, we will go over and review computer hardware concepts. And once we have a good understanding of the computer hardware from the next topic onwards, we will formally talk about operating systems. So this video that is computer basics in this video, I will uh, give you a very high uh, bird's eye overview of what a computer is and how does it function. So let's get started. So I will start the discussion from the very basics. I'm assuming every one of us here has used a computer at some point in time. If you're watching my video in some PC or laptop or mobile, then you're using a computer. So the basic question is what is a computer? So this diagram explains uh, in brief what a computer does. So first of all, here we have the user and this is the computer. So what happens is that whenever we are using a computer, the user gives some input. The computer takes that input and does some kind of processing to produce an output and that output is then returned to the user. So here let us talk about the input. What input does the user give? So there are two types of input. First of all, there is the data. This is the data and then there are, there are instructions. This is the sequence of instructions. So let us talk about data first. Data can be any kind of information. It could be text. It could be image audio, video, there are a wide variety of formats of data that is, that is available today. So the user can give any kind of data, right? That the user wants the computer to process for it. And apart from the data, the user will also give a sequence of instructions, which will tell the computer how the computer can process the input data. So these sequence of instructions, right? This is in the form of a computer program. So if you see, whenever you use a computer, you run some kind of uh, computer application. For example, a web browser, a word processor, PDF reader, music player, audio player, right? Uh, image, uh, image editor, right? These are all basically computer applications and a computer application is essentially a program and a program is a sequence of instructions. The sequence of instructions tells the computer how it has to manipulate the input data. For example, let us take uh, talk about the web browser. So the web browser has a instructions which whenever you give any input data, for example, text data to search something on the Internet, then the web browser knows how to take that input and send it over the Internet. So the computer application knows uh, how to process the data because it is it has the set of instructions. So basically the user give, will give the input data that they want the computer to process for them. And apart from the data, the user also has to supply the instructions in some form of computer application or program. And once the computer has both of these, it has the data and it also has the instructions which says how to process the data. The computer goes on and executes those instructions one by one. And after executing all those instructions, the data is uh, has been processed and manipulated to produce some kind of output. So this is the output and again this output is similar to the input data. It could be text, image, audio, video and or any other file format. But you get the idea. So the user gives some kind of input and the computer does the processing and returns the output. So this is how any kind of computer works. And this has been summarized in this diagram. So this block diagram says that there is first of all the input and after that the input is processed and then some output is produced. So let us refine this diagram. So this is a more detailed diagram of what a computer does. So here you can see there is this input and from where will the input come? The input will come from a set of input devices. 
so as i am recording this video there are a lot of input devices that i am using so there is this uh, mic uh, which is recording the audio there is this camera which is recording the video right and there is this mouse there is there can be keyboard so we have a wide variety of input devices that we use as a user to provide input to the computer so this was about the input and once the user gives the input that data goes into the memory so every computer any kind of computer will have some form of memory to store data right and here you can see there are two types of uh, information in this memory first of all there is the data which has been supplied by the user for processing and it also stores the instructions which the user has supplied in some form of computer program so the memory is a place where you store the data as well as the instructions right any content in the memory will fall into one of these categories either it will be some type of data or it will be some type of instruction essentially both instructions and data are, are some types of information but instruction is somewhat special in that it has a meaning that it conveys to the computer how should we process the data so this memory is the place where the information is kept while it is being processed and processed by who processed by the cpu the cpu or the central processing unit is the brain of the computer it is where the instructions get executed and the data gets processed so what will happen after the data has come from input devices and it is stored into the memory the cpu will fetch the data and one by one it will also fetch the instructions and does do the processing after it has processed and it has produced some output that data is sent back to the memory and once the output data is ready it will be sent to the output devices so we have a set of output devices from which we as a user can consume whatever output the computer has produced for us some example of output devices is the monitor the display right then there is printer then could be audio output for example speakers so these are all the output devices from we from which we as a user can consume the output that has been generated by the computer so this basic model that is uh, this diagram is called von neumann model and it is a mental model of how a computer works it has the input the processing and output it also has the different components that are there in a computer so input devices output devices memory and cpu these are the major components in any computer it could be any computer right it does not matter how complex or how simple the computer is and how it is implemented any kind of computer follows this model and has three major components the input output devices the memory and the cpu and this model that is von neumann model was proposed by john von neumann he was a computer scientist and in 1945 he proposed this model and this model uh, basically is a uh, accurate description of how any computer works right so any modern computer does not matter uh, what type it is how complex it is and what are the details of implementation any modern computer is based on this simple model of one that was proposed by von neumann that is there are input and output devices via which the user can interact with the system there is this memory where the instructions and data are stored and then there is this processor which is responsible for processing the data now the three components that we talked about right the cpu memory and io devices let us look at how each of these are connected in the computer system so this is a model of how the computer is actually organized so that model was a mental model of how the computer works and this is an actual model of how the computer is actually organized how the different pieces are connected with each other so here you can see the three major components the cpu memory and the set of io devices and all of them are connected via a bus so what is a bus a bus is an interconnection system it is basically a set of wires over which all the components that are connected to the bus can communicate with each other so this is how a computer is organized so even though it is a very simple model but any computer at the very fundamental will be organized like this so let us now look at the computer from a different perspective so the previous diagram was uh, how the different components are organized and connected now we will look at the computer system as a uh, stack of different layers so at the very bottom we have the hardware so what is hardware the computer hardware basically 
consists of the different components the cpu memory and the io devices these are the physical components the electronic chips right and then uh, there is this hardware interface over which there is software so the point here is that a computer system has uh, a lot of uh, hardware resources and that is the bottommost layer in a computer system now let us talk about the software so the software is basically the user applications so whenever you you are using a system you are using some kind of application uh, as i gave many examples web browser word processors pdf readers games movie players right so these are user applications that the user runs while using a computer system and the software is essentially composed of these user applications so each user application basically uh, is meant to solve some computing problem right and that computing problem can vary from one user application to another so for example the web browser the computing problem that the web browser is trying to solve is uh, communication over the network sending requests over the network and displaying that to the user and let's say let's take some other example uh, a movie player the computing problem that a movie player is trying to solve is to play a uh, video any video file uh, with the audio that is there so these are different computing problems so the point here is that although different user applications would be solving different computing problems the common thing among all the user application is that they will be using the computer hardware and the same computer hardware that can be used in different ways to solve different computing problems so each of these user application will use the cpu will use the memory will use the io devices to interact with the user but in different ways to solve different computing problems so this was about the software now let us bring the operating system into the picture so the point here is that the user applications do not run directly on top of the hardware interface so the image that i showed in the previous slide that is user applications are running directly on the hardware is inaccurate the user applications are not allowed to run on the hardware so there is a layer of software that is called the operating system which sits between the user application and the hardware and it is the um, it is the lowest level of software that runs directly on top of the hardware so let us uh, try to understand why user applications do not run directly on top of hardware and why do we need another layer of software between the application and the hardware so the first reason is that the hardware interface is very complex to program so uh, if imagine if you as a user or a programmer had to write programs directly for the hardware interface then it would be very difficult for us to write programs because the hardware interface is very complex right so it is not uh, easy or not feasible actually to write programs directly for the interface that is exposed by this electronic chips and hardware so we need a layer of software whose fundamental job is to simplify this hardware interface and provide another interface that is much simpler so this os interface over which the user applications run upon this is a much simpler interface as it abstracts out all the complexity of the hardware interface and it is much easier and much more productive to write uh, programs over this os interface so this was the first reason why user applications do not run directly on the hardware the reason is it is very complex to write and this is where the operating system helps us out by providing a much simpler interface now let us look at the second reason why we don't run uh, user applications directly on the hardware so basically as i said each user application will be using the computer hardware resources cpu memory and io devices every user application will be using this in different ways to solve different computing problems but the point is the computer hardware at the core the cpu memory and io devices is a shared resource these resources are shared among all user applications so all user applications will make requests to these resources and the resources will be allocated to the user application to do their job now the point is since all of these resources are shared and also these are limited resources mind you this there is not infinite uh, amount of processing power or memory storage so these are uh, resources which need to be managed carefully and properly if there is some user application that does, does not use these resources properly for example it monopolizes over the system and uh, it uses all the resources that are there it, what will happen is that the other user applications won't be able to use the 
computing resources and won't be able to run. So we want a proper allocation of these resources as it is a shared and limited resource, right? So this is where the operating system comes into the picture. So it manages all these hardware resources. It keeps track of how much resources are available. And then when the user applications request to the operating system to allocate some resources, the operating system does it in a proper and fair way. Also, it ensures that no uh, resources are idle. It tries to maximize the performance of the system by keeping the utilization of resources higher. So in a way the operating system is a resource manager it will keep track of all the resources and fulfill the requests that come from the user applications so it is an intermediary between the hardware and the applications so this is second fundamental reason why the user applications don't run directly on the hardware because we need an entity that will properly uh, mediate the uh, hardware resources to the user applications so now we have the very basic definition of an operating system. What is an operating system? It's a piece of software. It's a layer of software that manages the hardware and makes it easy and efficient to use. So we saw that the hardware interface is very complex and the it's like the operating system provides a simpler interface over this hardware interface. In this way, it makes the computer system easy to use. So that's the first part. And the second part is it makes the system efficient to use because it manages all the resources and uh, make sure the allocation of resources is fair and proper and the performance is also good. So in this way, it uh, manages the resources and makes the uh, using of system efficient. So these are the two fundamental responsibilities of the operating system. It makes the system easy as well as efficient to use. Now the next point is that the operating system runs on bare metal and needs to know about hardware interface in detail. So we have already said that uh, user applications don't run directly on the hardware interface. It's only the operating system that is allowed to run on bare metal. So by bare metal, I mean the uh, hardware interface. So since it's only the operating system that will run on the hardware interface, it has to know a quite uh, bit detail about how the hardware interface works. So it might not, uh, so the operating system might not need to know about the internals of the computer hardware, but it has to know how the hardware interface is and how does it work. So that is why we uh, are studying computer hardware before actually starting operating system because the operating system is intimately tied with the hardware that it has to manage. Remember that the fundamental responsibility of the operating system is to manage the hardware, right? It has to make it easy and efficient to use. So before it can do that, it has to have a good understanding of the hardware interface. So starting from the next few videos, we will go over the individual components of the computer hardware that is CPU, memory and IO devices. And we will review each of them so that we have a good understanding about how these uh, hardware components work so that when we start operating systems, we can uh, look at how the operating system manages them, how it makes this hardware easy and efficient to use. So guys, uh, this was it for this video. In this video, we had a very bird's eye overview uh, of how the computer system works, what it is, what it does. And uh, this was it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.